Oh yeah. I'm so glad that Jesus lived in me. Amen. I'm yes. so glad that Jesus lived in me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lived in me. Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Safe from sin and shame, yeah. but Jesus lifted me. Yeah. Safe from sin and shame, but Jesus lifted me. Yeah, Safe there. from sin and shame, but Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Amen. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. Amen. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Bless God. Bless God. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, I shall not be moved. Though the winds are going all around me, I shall not be moved. These winds will never to pass this child is just a test so I shall not I shall not oh I shall not be moved when I sit and beat at my foundation I shall not be moved, for my soul is anchored in salvation. I shall not be moved. These winds will never last. This storm is sure to When the clouds of trouble hover over me, I shall not be moved. When the road is dark, the way I can see, I shall not be moved. In the rock is where I'm safely hiding. I shall not be moved. In my Savior's word, I am abiding. I shall not be moved. Amen. These winds will never last. This storm is sure to
Saúde. Oh, the God, that's old song. Man! Yes. You may have your worldly pleasures, your silver and your gold. You may pile up all the riches that this old world can hold. But I'd rather have my Savior and with Him firmly stand. For I want to be ready to meet Him in the glory land. I want to be ready to meet Him by and by. I want to be ready to meet Him in the sky. Oh, I want to be more like Him and do His will as command. For I want to be ready to meet Him in the glory land. You may talk about your riches, your diamonds and your pearls. You may gain the wealth for ages of this and all the world. Lord. The Savior is more precious. With Him I'll take my stand. I want to be ready to meet Him in the glory land. I want to be ready to meet Him by and by. I want to be ready to meet Him in the sky. Oh, I want to be more like Him and do His less command. For I want to be ready to meet Him in the glory land. There is one thing I can boast of, salvation from the fall. I'm an heir to wealth and glory, my Father owns it all. That is why I'm shouting happy and go at His command. For I want to be ready to meet Him Amen. in the glory land. I want to be ready to meet Him by and by. I want to be ready to meet Him in the sky. Oh, I want to be more like Him and do His blessed command. For I want to be ready to meet Him in the glory land. I want to be ready to meet him by and by. I want to be ready to meet him in the sky. Oh, I want to be more like him and do his less command. For I want to be ready to meet him. In the glory land. Amen. For I want to be ready to meet him in the glory land. For I want to be ready to meet him in the glory land. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank the Lord. Praise God. Good morning, Good morning. My God. Amen. Help us, Lord. Turn your Bibles, if you will, to the Gospel of Luke. Praise God. Yeah. 17th chapter. Seventh chapter of Luke, amen. Again, reading at verse number 20. Luke 17, verse number 20. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. It's not a literal kingdom that you right. can see with your eyes. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. It's a spiritual kingdom. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he said unto the disciples, the days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. 
And they shall say to you, see here or see there, go not after them, nor follow them. For as the lightning that lighteneth out of the one part under heaven shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. My Lord. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. My Lord. <laughs> they did eat. Mm -hmm. They drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. My Lord. My Likewise also as it was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted and they built it. Mm. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. My Lord. Remember Lot's wife. Mm. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. Whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. I tell you in that night there shall be two men in one bed the one shall be taken and the other left shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. And they answered and said to him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. Amen. Let's just pray before we get started. Amen. Father in heaven, Lord, this yes, morning. Yes, Lord. But thankful, Lord, for your word. Thankful, Father, how we can look to your word for guidance and direction, for help in this life, dear God. And truly, we are a people who need your help. Yes, Lord. We ask you, Father, that you would guide our thoughts and guide the words, Lord. Guide the message, Lord. That yes, Lord. It will be profitable, Lord, helpful to each one present. Lord God, may the word have its uh, penetrate each heart, dear God. And Lord God, reveal, Lord God, uh, ourselves before thee, Lord. How you see us, dear God, not how we see ourselves, Lord. We may think more of ourselves than we ought, but, Lord, we want to judge ourselves according to how you see us. Yes, Lord. So, Lord, we yes. ask that you bless just bless us, each one. Yes, Lord. Give us a willing heart to be to say amen to your will and your way and your word. In Jesus' dear name, Father, we ask. Amen. 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 Verse 26, same chapter says, And as it was in the days of Noah... So shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. And life was going on as usual. They did eat, they drank, yes. they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered to the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Oh my. <laughs> and likewise also as it was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sowed, they planted, they built it. Life was was good. Yes. <laughs> My Lord. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. So Jesus kind of presented some pictures before us that he wanted us to consider. That's right. That's right. <laughs> he said, listen, back in Noah's day, Right before God's judgment came upon the earth, upon mankind, people were just carrying on and doing their best with their, their normal routines. Right. right. People were eating and drinking, marrying and planting and doing all these things. Mm -hmm. Attending to all these things, but they failed to hear what thus saith the Lord. Amen. And likewise in Lot's time. They were doing all the same, many of the same things that you and I do. That's right. That's right. Amen. Going about our daily routines. My Lord, help us, Lord. And they didn't realize that God's judgment, God's wrath, yes. was knocking on the door. Okay. And when they realized it, it was too late. Yes. 
And verse 30 says again, even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Jesus is saying, listen, there's going to come a day when I'm going to rebuild. I'm going to be revealed for mankind. And it's going to be the same way. Right. We're going to be marrying. We're going to be giving them marriage. We're going to be eating and drinking and, and just living our lives. Mm -hmm. And not recognizing that God's, amen, judgment is at the door. That's right. Amen. My Lord. Amen. So this is a serious thing. And I remember before I got saved, I would, I would try to take messages like this and try to somehow push it aside and, and hope that it wouldn't come while I was out there in sin. And I thank God for his mercy. That's right. Amen. But amen. But mercy has its limits. That's right. Amen. amen. The day of mercy is going to come to an end. And it did for those people in Noah's time, and it did also for those in Lot's time. And he said it's going to be the same way some people who are going to have plans, have good intentions, they're going to miss out because they waited too long. Sure. Amen. So let's look at this. Turn to, let's look at Noah, the sixth chapter of Genesis. My Lord, help us, Lord. All right, the sixth chapter of Genesis, begin reading that verse number one. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. God made it one man and one wife but now it seems like they have just totally just corrupted this, this institution of marriage. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, he saw what mankind was doing. The Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. Oh Lord, my God. For that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be 120 days. And the idea that his spirit shall not always strive with man, and what he's saying is there, the, he sent his spirit to, to deal with the hearts and minds of mankind. To try to uh, guide them back to the way he wanted them to conduct themselves, the way they, he wanted them to live their lives. Oh but they seemingly just ignored it and pushed it aside, and, and God said, okay, well, my spirit, not gonna all, I'm not going to always have mercy upon you. My right. spirit will not always strive right. with mankind. My Lord, my God. Amen. Amen. Let's jump down to verse number five. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. They had just totally, completely ignored God. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil, not some of the time, but continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made man. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Let's jump down to verse 13. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood, room shalt thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. And he gave him the instructions on how to make it. Let's jump down to uh, chapter 7, verse number 1. And the Lord's God, and the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Of every clean beast thou shalt take of thee by sevens, the male and the fe and his female, and of the of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female, of fowls also of the air by sevens, the male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. And yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth. Forty days and forty nights, and every living substance that I have made, will I destroy them off the face of the earth. My Lord. And Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him. My and Lord. Noah was 600 years old when the blood of waters was upon the earth. Let's jump down to verse number 15. And they went in, talking about the animals, went in unto Noah, into the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. And 
They that went in, went in male and female of all flesh as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. And the flood was forty days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lift up above the earth. And the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went upon the face of the waters, and the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered, and all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and of cattle and of beasts and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. My Lord. And every man, hmm. all in whose nostrils was the breath of life of all that was in the dry land, died. My hmm. Lord. Everything, everything died. Let me read verse 16 again. They that went in, went in male and female of all flesh as God had commanded him. And the Lord shut him in. Right. Amen. God closed the door. Mm. God closed the door. So when we read these scriptures, we have to kind of stop and think and process. Even in today's time, there, and I don't, didn't do the research, but if you were going to go out and, and, and have the, a task of building some type of ship or boat or whatever, it's going to take some time. It's going to take some months. Get the materials together, get the plans together, designs together, and, and then get the crew together and the machinery and all that to actually uh, build something like this. It's going to take some time. It took, Moses, it took Noah a, a, a real long time. Many, many years. I think like a hundred plus years to put this thing together. Oh my, my Lord. A long time. A very long time. Yes, my Lord. Obviously he didn't have modern machinery. They didn't have a Home Depot or Lowe's. They could just go down to and buy the lumber or the materials and so forth. They had to go through all the process of getting the materials together and yeah. going back and forth and, and reviewing the instructions that they received from God and and, and trying to uh, get people to help, perhaps, and those who they could, as it were, persuade to believe the word of God. And I believe they persuaded some. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My Lord. Over the length of that time period that it took for, for Noah to build the ark, there's very little doubt in my mind that there was times when Noah being a righteous man and he had influence perhaps with some neighbors or schoolhood, if I can put it in modern terms, some schoolhood friends and some cousins and relatives and, and those he knew and they maybe worked together and they, they knew he was a righteous man who, who was an honest man and Noah said, listen, God has shown me that he's going to destroy this world. My Lord, my God. Mm. And so that perhaps shook the foundation or shook uh, cause a stir to, to come upon those who he had influence with. No doubt. And so maybe they, as we were Jane, joined in and started hammering some wood and cutting down some trees and, and helped to gather and help build this ark. My Lord, my Lord, yes. But like with so many things with time, you get discouraged. And the enemy starts talking to you and starts reasoning with you and so now, now what did Noah say? And you started having conversations with your friends. And now Noah said it's going to rain. What does rain? What does it mean? What does that rain mean? What does it mean? Well, somehow the water is going to come down from the sky. Well, how's the water going to get up there? At this point, there had never rained before. That's right. Amen. You don't read the word cloud. I looked it up yesterday. You, the word cloud does not appear in the Bible until the ninth chapter after the flood. Or maybe it's during the flood, but nevertheless, it doesn't appear prior to the ninth chapter of, Act, uh, of Genesis. Mm. And part of the water that flooded the earth, it seemed like it came from the deep. And it's there seemingly like uh, the, the ground opened up and, and shot forth water that way also. So it didn't just come from up top, up top in the form of rain, but it also came up from the bottom. Or the earth, if you will. And so you're thinking about this, this idea that Noah presented, and, and I can understand why people are like, well, it's never, that's never happened before. What, how? Mm -hmm. Right, 
Right. And so there's a tendency to reject the word of God because in this case it sounds kind of far fetched. Mm -hmm. My Lord, yes. So there were no doubt some who started, maybe quit, maybe started again. But at the very end of the, t at the tale, so to speak, when, when, when God shut the door, there was just a uh, no one his family. It wasn't because Noah was a bad preacher. Amen. That wasn't the problem. But for whatever the reason, the people did not believe God. Yes. And you can just you you have probably imagined yourself. You can imagine when God shut the door, they began to start. Oh, I hope. I, I wonder if we made a mistake here. And then the rain began. And the water to get the flood. And you can imagine also, they were outside the, the ark and crying to Moses for mercy. Uncle Noah, cousin Noah, open for me. Oh, they were sober then. They may have been eating and drinking and marrying and all these things prior to that, but when that rain started, they sobered up real fast. Right, right. And, and all they were just hoping for, just a, a, a moment of mercy. But mercy had passed. Yeah. My Lord. Mercy had passed. My Lord. My God. My Lord. My Lord. Yeah. No doubt when, like today, when you talk about religious matters and so forth, and you hear comments like, oh, you all think you're the only ones that's right. No, I probably heard the same thing. Mm -hmm. No, who you think you are? So God, God only told you, Noah, didn't tell anybody else? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Oh, no, well, if the rain does come, Noah, then I'll, I'll just go up and climb this hill and I'll, I'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Making all kinds of excuses and so on and so forth. Where the water going to come from, Noah? All kind of uh, 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 reasons to doubt mm -hmm. what he said. Lord. But when the rain started, they wanted mercy and they believed him, but then it was too late. The door of mercy had passed. The Lord. Amen. God. Amen. Genesis. Stay there. 18th chapter. Lord. The first part of the first few verses of the chapter was about these three men that came to Abraham. They were more like angels than actual men, but they came in the form of men. Mm -hmm. Let's start reading that verse number nine of Genesis, Genesis the 18th chapter. Verse number nine. The first few verses we read are not really part of the message, but I, I want to read them just for our encouragement. Mm -hmm. So verse 9 says, and they said unto him, the angels that came with the men, where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. Nine-year-old Sarah shall have a son. She was past the childbearing age. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. And Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. In other words, she was bashed, again, past the childbearing age. My Lord, yes. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself. After saying, after I have waxed old, till I have pleasure, my Lord being old also. Not only my old, my husband's old. He's a hundred or ninety-nine or hundred, however old he was. <laughs> my Lord, yes. The Lord said unto Abraham, wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? Then he said this. This is what I wanted to read for the saints. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not, saying, I laugh not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. Mm -hmm. Verse 16. And the men rose up from thence and looked toward Sodom, and Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. Let's jump down to verse number 20. Uh, verse 23. Or, I'm sorry, verse 20. 
And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great and because their sin is very grievous, My Lord. I will go down now and see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it, which is coming to me. And if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure there be fifty righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Now that verse is a strange verse to me. I think about that scripture from time to time. The last part of that verse, Abraham said to God, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? It's like he was bringing God's character into question. Mm -hmm. God, you can't destroy the righteous with the wicked. There must be a distinction. So Lord, if we find 50 righteous, in the city, will you not spare the city for the 50 righteous that be therein? Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, if I find this out of 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their My sins. My God, my Lord. Listen, hmm. the only reason, as I judge it, the only reason God has not brought this world into judgment so far already is because of the few righteous people. That are holding back the right to that holding back the wrath of God. The Lord. Amen. But at some point, even they are not going to hold back God's wrath. Amen. Sure. God is having mercy because the righteous are pleading to him that, like Abraham is. Lord, spare my child. Lord, spare my husband. Spare my wife. Spare my siblings. Spare my neighbors. Right. And God is honoring those requests. Amen. Lord, Lord. Amen. Help Lord. Amen. And the Lord said, verse 26, if I find Sodom 50 riches, righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. And Abraham answered and said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Peradventure their lack shall lack five of the fifty righteous, without destroy all the city for lack of five. And he said, If I find there forty and five, I will not destroy it. Mm -hmm. Seems like Abraham was kind of thinking, now. I really don't know if there's going to be that many in that city. So maybe I need to try to get this number lower. Verse 29, he's speaking to him yet again and said, Peradventure there shall be 40 found there. And he said, I will not do it for 40 sakes. Mm, my Lord. And he said to him, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Peradventure there shall be 30, shall 30 be found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find 30 there. God's a merciful God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. That's right. Amen. 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 He, he, he wants to find, he wants to have mercy. Yes. Verse 31. Mm. And he said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Peradventure there shall be 20 found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for 20's sake. And he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry. And I will speak yet but this once. Peradventure ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten sake. And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communion with Abraham. And Abraham returned unto his place. Start off with 50, came all the way down to 10. Lord. And basically Abraham is saying, Lord, if, if we can find 10 righteous people, will you not have mercy? God said, Well, Abraham. For 10 people. As, as wicked as the people are, as, as wicked as the city is, as, as ungodly as they are, if I find some righteousness, 10 of them, I'll spare that whole city. Amen. Okay. I say again that God, the reason God's wrath has not been poured out upon this world, even this nation specifically, because God has found some righteous people. Oh, Amen. Lord. Thank the Lord. Amen. 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 Chapter 19, verse 1. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, 
and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. My Lord. My and he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him and entered into his house. And he made them a feast and did bake eleven bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. They did not mean to know them, meaning they're going to sit down and have dinner with them and shake their head and find out their address and where they live and their family. That's not what he meant. Amen. They meant in a homosexual way. Mm. And Lot went out at the door to them and shut the door after him and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you and do you to them as it is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing. But therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. And they said, stand back. Mm -hmm. They said again, this one fellow came in to sojourn and we will needs be a judge. Now will we deal worse with them, with thee, than with them. Lord, and they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. There's some wicked men. Mm -hmm. you, you don't want to give us these men that came in unto you? Well, then we're going to take you then. And we're going to treat you worse than we're going to treat them. Lord, my God. Mm. But the men, and, and, the, and, and God was willing to have mercy upon these people. As wicked as they were, if he could have found ten, he would have still had mercy. That's right. Mm. My Lord, amen. Verse 10, but the men put forth their hand and put Lot into the house to them and shut to the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides, son-in-law, or thy sons and thy daughters? And whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. For we would destroy this place, because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons in law. So it says, sons, plural, in law, which married his daughters, so that at least two, maybe more, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. My Lord, my God. But he seemed as one that mocked or joked. So that's what the word mocked means. Seemed as one that mocked unto his sons in law. Let's stop there. I'm going back for a moment to Noah. It's hard to say how I would have responded if, if, if I had been there during that time. I, I tell you guys the story. It's, it's a humorous story. Uh, uh, I, I share from time to time, but years ago when I was a child, I was watching television. And they had this camera. He didn't know he was being filmed, but he was leaving his office uh, at his job. And he went to get on the elevator to, to go down, you know, to the first floor and go home. So he got, he pushed a button and eventually the elevator came to his floor. It opened up. He stepped in. And normally when you step in, you kind of, you know, at least kind of face the door or in the front, somewhat, you might turn, might stand sideways, but you're, you're somewhat, you have an eye on the door anyhow. But in this elevator, if the door is, is right here, and the door opened up, he stepped into it, and he would normally turn around and face the door. Mm -hmm. Everyone in the elevator was facing backwards. And so he got in and walked in, and he was standing the, the, the normal way, the proper way, and he looked around at everyone else, and he turned around like that. And I started laughing. It was so funny to me. But I asked myself, what would I have done? I, I like to think. I like to think that I would have said to myself, I don't know why they're standing the wrong way, but I'm going to stand the, the normal or right way. But I, I actually believe 
I wouldn't want to fit in. And I said to myself, they know something I don't know, and I don't want to be the eyeball. I think I probably would have turned around too, like everybody else. That's what I think I would have done. In Noah's time, Noah was the oddball. But I like to think, I don't know, but I like to think, the majority of people did not think this way, but I like to think that I would have said to myself, maybe Noah is crazy. Maybe this idea of rain and coming down from heaven, maybe that is off, maybe that is strange, maybe that is weird, but what do I have to lose by believing his word? And helping him out to build this ark and take my family with me just in case he's right. I may not wholeheartedly have, 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 have embraced it and believed it, but just in case he is right, what do I have to lose? Right. Right. Amen. My Lord, that's right. That's right. Now back over to uh, Lot's time, he was where we left off, Lot was dealing with his daughters and daughters and sons-in-law. And the Bible says he's seen he see this one that, that mocked or joke, talking about God is going to destroy this city. And we need to leave, we need to flee. Mm -hmm. And I like to think that up to that point that the Bible speaks of not being a righteous man. Not one that was, you know, always joking and, and cutting up and lying and stealing and cheating, but he was an honorable man. And I like to think that his daughters would have said within themselves, like, this, this is not something dad would have just made up. That's right. That's right. That's right. And maybe, maybe they, because it doesn't happen every week, maybe they had a hard time embracing that concept of God destroying that city. But... But what do you have to lose? Mm -hmm. We can just leave or we'll grab a couple things. We'll just leave for a few days and go to Aunt Susie's house just for a few days. If nothing happens within five, we'll come back home. But just in case he's right, yes. what do you have to lose? Amen. My Lord, yes. That's the way I like to think that I would have judged it. David, do you really believe not? Like, well, I, I don't know. But just in case he's right. My Lord, my God. Let's just believe, let's just, let's just believe him just in Amen. case. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. But their attitude was, nah, he's just joking, mocking. And they let it go. Let's see what happens. Verse 14 again. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. The Bible says, but he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. My Lord. While he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. Let's jump down. Verse number 20. Behold, now this city is near. This is a lot requesting some to go somewhere else. Behold, now the city is near to flee unto and is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou become thither. Therefore, the name of this city was called Zoe. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. Verse 24. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities 
and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. Saints of God, would that be a lesson to us? Yes. Amen. If we're going to obey God, then we're going to, we're going to obey God. We can't be looking back and, and as it were, being fretful over that which is behind us. Amen. We have to move forward. We have to move forward and stop looking back. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Amen. We got to jump in with both feet. And as it were, we can't just be tiptoeing on this on this side and putting our toes in. No, we're going to serve God. We got to jump in. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. With all heart, mind, soul, and body. Oh yes, help us, Lord. Amen. Verse twenty says, "But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt." And Abraham, we'll just, we'll just stop there. We'll stop there. Verse twenty four says, "And the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah, and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord." out of heaven and he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities mm -hmm. and even that which grew up on the ground. What was going through the mind of his sons and daughter-in-laws, of his daughters, of his daughters and sons-in-law when mercy had ended? Mm -hmm. No, not everything. Oh, we had just listened. Right, right. If we had just taken heed to the word of God. Amen. Oh Lord, yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. How many are in eternity today simply because they refused to hearken to the word of God? Mm -hmm. One of the saddest stories I, I ever heard of in, in our lifetime was this young lady since when I was living in Chicago, going to church in Chicago, living in Illinois, I wasn't actually living in Chicago itself, but going to church in Chicago. And the young lady, you know, the congregation is, you know, four or five hundred people, and it seemed like someone got saved. I was every service, every Sunday. And this particular Sunday morning, the young lady went to the what they have is a prayer room, went to the prayer room, and. The ministers were talking to her and trying to encourage her to, to get saved. And, and bottom line is she told him she wanted to be saved, but but not not quite yet. She wanted to work some things out with her boyfriend first, and then she would come back and get saved the next Sunday. And they can't, we can't force someone to do something against their will. Right, right. She had good intentions. But what she didn't understand where mercy was going to end. Okay. Oh, Lord. So she, with her argument, prevailed and, and they let her go with the hope that she would be back the following Sunday. But on Monday, that same boyfriend that she was trying to work things out with, he took gasoline and threw it on her and lit a match. And she died. Oh Lord, what a sad story. Sure. She was that close. That's right. That, yes. Amen. That close to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. God was extending his hand of mercy one last time. Oh Lord. And yes. she, was, she was that close. And she delayed for her boyfriend, which ultimately caused her to lose her life. Lord. Oh, when does mercy end? We don't necessarily know. Right. David said in one place, he said, there is but a step. Saul was pursuing him. And David knew that his life was vulnerable. He understood that. And we all need to be conscious of that. Not because we are uh, aware of some gangster coming after us or, or some crazy relative coming to sh not because of that necessarily but nevertheless our lives are not we're not in control of our lives the only way reason we woke up this morning because God had mercy that's right yeah. Amen. it was not within our own control and David understood that he said there's 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 but a step between me and death that's right Amen. my next step my next stride might be my last one Amen. Amen. He understood how, how vulnerable 
how uncertain life was. That's right. And how it was beyond his control. And we all need to be conscious of that. Right. Same sinner alike. Yes. And life can slip away any moment now. That's right. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. So here in Lot's time, I wonder what was his family thinking when the fire from heaven began to fall. <laughs> Amen. No doubt they wanted mercy, but mercy had passed. Mercy had passed. Mm -hmm. Amen. We could turn, we won't turn there now, but we could turn to Jonah. The book of Jonah, you can read it in your own time, the third chapter. God sent Jonah, we all know the story of Jonah the whale, way out, or the fish, the big fish. But after the first couple of chapters, and uh, Jonah's is given, the, in the third chapter, he's given the, 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 the responsibility to, to go to Nineveh mm -hmm. and preach to them. And something, when you read that third chapter, something very important it says. It's just a little phrase, but something it said. It says, they believed God. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. God said his judgment is coming. My Lord, yes, he did. Amen. And we believe it. Mm -hmm. And by believing, they responded a certain way. They put away the wickedness. And they fasted and prayed and cried mightily to God. God saw their repentance and how they turned from their wickedness. That's right, he did. Amen. God said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have mercy again. Amen. Mercy was about, ready to, was about ready to run out, but I see how they have responded to me. Well, then I'm going to extend mercy then. Right. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. Yes, God help you, Lord. Second Kings. My Lord. Fifth chapter, Second Kings. Begin reading at verse number one. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable. Mm -hmm. Because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria, and he was also a mighty man in valor. But he was, there's only one problem, he was a leper. Mm -hmm. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, Would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. In other words, the little maid was from Israel and she told her mistress, her master's wife, listen, if he was, if he was with the prophet in, that is in Samaria, he would be covered from his leprosy. God would tell him to touch him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse 4 and 1 went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go to it, go to Go and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver and six thousand pieces of gold and ten changes of raiment. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is coming to thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman, my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. And it came to pass, when the king of Israel had read the letter, that he rent his clothes and said, Am I God? to kill and to make a lie that this man does send me unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? My Lord. Wherefore my consider, God. I pray you, and see how he seeketh the quarrel against me. So this king understood, listen, I have no power to heal this man. I don't have death and life in my hands. I can't do anything for him. What, 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 what is he up to? What kind of trouble is he trying to start? Verse 8, and it was so when Elijah, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Oh my, yes. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and 
stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, go and wash in Jordan seven times and thy flesh shall come again to thee and thou shalt be clean. This Naaman was a man of authority, an honorable man. But from his perspective, this supposed, supposedly this, this man of God, Elijah, he didn't even have enough decency, enough respect for me to come out and greet me personally. <laughs> My Lord. He said, this messenger, go tell him to go dip into Jordan seven times. It's like some dignitary comes to your house and comes to see you. The governor comes to, to your house and you don't even have time to even go to talk to him and say hello and greet him and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. Listen, you tell the, tell the, you know, your child, listen, go tell, go tell the governor to, to do such and such. That would be kind of offensive. Verse 10, Elijah sent a messenger to him saying, go and wash in Jordan seven times and thy flesh shall come again to thee and thou shalt be clean. The Bible says, but Naaman was wroth and went away and said, behold, I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over this place of the place and recover my the leper. I had it planned in my mind how things are going to work out. This clown won't even have it. These state clowns talk to me. I said he went away. He was raw. He was upset. I get it. I, I understand. I'm not criticizing Naaman at all. Maybe I should, but I'm not. I get it. From his perspective, Elijah showed him no respect at all. My Lord. Mm -hmm. And now I go dip in this dirty Jordan. Verse 12. Are not Abana and Farpar, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. I came all this way, get all, went to the bank, so to speak, get all these gifts and money and so forth that I could, that I could as it were, pay him and show him my appreciation. He didn't have the decency to come out here and at least greet me, and now he was still dumping. Uh, dipped seven times in this old dirty water. The, the waters back home are better than these. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My Lord. That was his attitude. My Lord. I get it. I understand. Mm -hmm. And his servants came, verse 13, mm -hmm. near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, wouldest thou not have done it? How much rather than when he said to thee, Wash and be clean. Listen, if he had told you to do something real difficult or real hard, you would have done all you could do to do it. What was the servant saying? He's saying, King or, or Naaman, what do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? That's right. <laughs> Amen. Maybe it won't even work. Maybe he was disrespectful. Mm -hmm. Maybe he didn't, as the word, do things the way you wanted him to do them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what do you have to lose? By believing the man of God in the word of God. What do you have to lose? That's what the servant told Naaman. Basically, in so many words. And it persuaded him. Verse 14, then when he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. He may not have felt respected. He may not have even had a lot of confidence that this would have worked out the way he had hoped. Mm -hmm. But what did he have to lose? Lord. Mm -hmm. And he obeyed the word of God. And God touched his body. Oh, yeah. Amen. We're almost finished, saints. Luke's Gospel, 6th chapter.
Luke's chapter, Luke, Luke's gospel, the chapter 6, begin reading at verse number 46. And why call ye me Lord, Lord? Lord means master mm -hmm. or ruler or one who has authority. Yes. Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? My Lord, yes. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He's like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. That rock is Christ. And when the floods arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. That's an illustration of those who actually believe the word of God. Yes. Amen. But he that, verse 49, but he that hear and doeth not, they hear the word of God, but they put it off and reject it. It's like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth. Looks good. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell. And the ruin of that house was great. Things may look good now. My Lord. Mm -hmm. My Lord, yes. But if your life is not built upon Jesus Christ, Amen. if he's not the foundation of your life, if he is not Lord, Lord, where you're living a life according to what he tells you how to do, according to what his will is, not your own. Mm -hmm. Amen. I don't care how good your life, how good your house looks now. It's going to come a day when the house is going to crumble. Amen. Because it's not built upon Jesus Christ. Amen. That's right. The book of Micah, we'll close there. Book of Micah. Oh, Lord, help us, my God. Amen. Micah, the sixth chapter. And I want one verse, verse number eight. He hath showed thee, O man, what is good. And what doth the Lord require of thee but to do justly, to love mercy. The last part says, and to walk humbly with thy God. What does it mean to walk humbly? We understand the idea of to do justly, to do right, and, and, to, and, and, and to, to, to be obedient. We understand the idea of being merciful. But to walk humbly is, I want to highlight that point. Humble not only means to be lowly, but there's a two part to that. I have to exalt God likewise. Mm -hmm. My Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I have to allow Christ to be Lord of my life, right. the master of my life. Praise God, yes. Yeah. So, Lord, it's no longer my will. It's no longer me doing what I, as I want to do. But, Lord, from this day forward, my desire is to do your will. Amen. Whatever you would have me to do. Praise God. Why call me Lord, Lord, and do not what I say? Amen. My Lord, amen. Help us, Lord. He said, oh, he, said, he said, show thee, O oh man, what is good. This is good. Mm -hmm. And what did the Lord require? Thee? This is what the Lord wants from you and what he wants from me. But to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Mm. Amen. Help us, Lord. So again, to walk humbly means I'm, I'm exalting God in his word, and I'm going to be beneath it. I'm going to be, as it were, obedient to it. We read initially in Luke's gospel how it said as it was in the days of Noah and how it was in the days of Lot, how people were going about doing their own thing and not submitting themselves to the will or purpose or word of God. My God. Amen. Amen. And mercy ended and they were lost. And this is going to be when I, when I return, it's going to be the same way. 
People are going to refuse, just like they did with Noah, just like they did with Lot, to be obedient to my word. They're going to reject it, and mercy is going to end. My Lord, my God. And they're going to be lost in that forever. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, as the Hebrew letter says, and we quote from time to time, in the day you hear his voice, heart, not your heart. Don't turn away from it. While mercy is still being extended. Amen. Won't you yield? If, if, if the Spirit of God is dealing with you, it's because God sees something worthwhile, worth saving in you. Amen. That's right. So as we stand, mm -hmm. as we stand, if anyone has a need, my God, help Lord. We encourage you to come. Amen. 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 Who knows? This may be your last opportunity. We don't know. Your door of mercy may be closing. And when God shuts that door of mercy like he did on the ark, my Lord, no one can open that door. That's right. Amen. Amen. We can't overpower God and force his hand to open the door. When mercy is closed, it's closed. And if you're not prepared, you'll be lost in that forever. Amen. It's over being messed. I understand that. But it's something that needs to be heard Amen. and we need to be reminded Amen. of. Yes. Amen. Yeah. And the saints are like Abraham, and we're saying, Lord, have mercy. Yes, yes. Amen, yes. God, will you spare the unrighteous because we found enough righteous people. Mm -hmm. Amen. And perhaps those righteous people can persuade those who are not righteous to become followers. Amen. So God, as we reason with God, God is, okay, I'll, I'll give a little bit more mercy. But the day when mercy is going to be closed, it's coming. That's right. It's going to come. Amen. Amen. If you have a need, the altar is always open, as we see. Amen. Page 386 in the evening. 386. All right, God. Have mercy. Grace is offered you, dear sinner, in this gospel day of time. Grace to save and keep from evil and to make your life sublime. Soon the summer will be ended and the
saved and God was dealing with my heart like he had so many times before and I, I realized that I was kind of at a there was a barrier so to speak between me and serving God I knew I should get saved but yet there was something holding me back and so what I, I made a, a good decision and I, I just, on my own, I said, Lord, I know I should, but I don't, I don't, as of right now, I don't want to be saved. I know I should be saved, but I don't want to. Mm -hmm. I was just being honest. Mm -hmm. The world, for whatever reason, has to have too much of a hold on me. My oh, Lord, my God. I said, Lord, as a sinner, I was praying, I said, Lord, give me a mind and a desire yes, to be saved. My God. Amen. Yes. Yes. I was just being honest. I right now, this is not what I want. I should want it, but I don't. Lord, you help me to desire this. Yes, my God. And God heard that prayer, saints. Mm -hmm. So, dear sinner friend, that's as fair as you can be with your soul. Any reasonable-minded person would have to acknowledge that I know I should get saved. I don't know where mercy is going to end. I know I should. By God. Yes, Lord. But perhaps you're just not ready. You just don't feel like I'm, I'm ready to do it. Mm. Well, then be fair to your own soul and say, Lord, if you will help me change my heart, give me a desire, give me a longing. Yes. Help me see the seriousness of eternity. Amen. 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 Pray that way yourself. Ask God to help you. To give you a desire. Yes. That's as fair as we can be. Amen. That's as fair as you can be with your own soul. That's right. Amen. 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 So I that's that's what I did. And that helped me. And I encourage you, sinner friend, to do the same. That's right. Amen. 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 All right, as we close, thankful for your kind of